checking out? Previously on Round Sailing, we left Bonaire and sailed to the neighboring island Curaçao. We have some very big news <laughs> that we haven't been telling anyone. This, uh, this sail is actually our last <laughs> sail on Round 2. Yes, we have uh, sold the boat. <laughs> It's a bit crazy, huh? In Curaçao we met our local friends and welcomed the Latin tall ship regatta. We're anchored in Spanish water, a big sheltered lagoon. Yeah, so we're back like five years later in the exact same spot, almost, as the last time we were here in Curaçao. Um, Barry, the old sea dog, he used to have his boat over there. This was our spot, and uh, yeah, feels like we never left. <laughs> so we have about two weeks until the new owner of the boat arrives here in Curaçao to take ownership of round two. So in that time we have a lot of things that we need to do. Uh, some small stuff on the boat that I have promised to fix and I want to fix before we hand over the boat. And uh, also, all the stuff that we have on the boat that we need to empty and some of the stuff we will get rid of try to sell uh, and then we'll see if we can uh, manage to get everything into um, our luggage on the plane back to sweden uh, because it's uh, quite expensive to get stuff uh, shipped from here and yeah the problem is that we don't really know where we will find our future boat uh, if, if we would know that, it would be easier to make a good decision if we should leave the stuff here on the island, maybe put it in the storage here, or if we should take it back home. But since we don't know, uh, I think it's best to try to get as much as possible with us on the flight back home. I just sold my guitar the other day to a fellow cruiser. And yesterday I found a cruiser over here, he wanted the, <laughs> the flotation suit, like we sailed in, uh, in wintertime with. Uh, I thought it was going to be very hard to sell that down here, but we were lucky, he was heading up to Greenland, so perfect fit. Yeah, we started packing last night, and um, I think we have a little less stuff than we had on round one actually, so hopefully this will be a little bit easier than back then. Um, I remember when we emptied the old boat, we had around, if I remember correctly, around 200 kilos of stuff that we put on a pallet for a shipment back home with boat uh, from Los Angeles back home to Sweden. This time we have, I don't know, exact weight, but we have six big suitcases carry-on luggage and some small baggage so that's like almost 200 kilos so maybe there's room enough for everything so the plan for today is to fix some of the plugs on the teak deck that's not something that the new owner has requested but i want to fix these that's pretty common on a teak deck every now and then there's a plug falling off so i'll try to fix all of those there's maybe five or six of them on the whole deck yeah, I'm going to change the, the fan for the engine compartment to a new one that I bought. Yeah, clean up the engine compartment. Of course, clean the whole boat inside and outside. Uh, it's been a lot of sand coming from our time in Bonaire because strong winds 
from land there and some say it was even from Sahara but I don't know about that. That island is pretty dry so I think most of the dust that we have on the boat is from the actual island. Um, yeah, just overall look over the boat so we're happy to hand it over in that state to the new owner. It always feels nice if you know that the boat is in a good condition when you hand it over. So the teak deck on round two is still in uh, great shape and it's a bit over 22 years old now. Um, and that's the main difference between a quality teak deck and a deck of lesser quality. But most importantly, how you treat the deck. I would say that this deck can easily survive another 15 to 20 years if you just take care of it the right way. So what's the best way to treat a teak deck then? Um, yeah, in my book you should never put any oil or anything like that on the teak. Only use water to clean it. Uh, you could have some um, just normal soap. We have brown soap to clean this deck um, when it's really dirty. Otherwise just water. And we always clean the teak across the grain. Never in this direction because then you will yeah, clean away the wood, really, because it's kind of soft teak. When the deck is getting a bit older, you will see that the caulking here will stand up because the teak wears faster than the caulking. And in my book, you should cut the caulking down when that happens. Otherwise, when you're walking on it, you will pull on the caulking in this direction and that could make it uh, getting loose from the teak. So use a razor and cut it down flush with the teak. It will also make it nicer to walk on. If you're living up north, you could use a product called the Boracol. I think it's called that in English as well. I'll put the link down here or the name here. Um, to prevent fungus and mold to grow on the teak. And that will also um, uh, have the benefit of your, you not have to clean the deck as often because every time you clean the deck you actually wash away the wood so don't clean it too often and if it's not really dirty use only water and not with a high pressure and never use high pressure uh, washing on the on the deck because that will really kill it if you have your boat in the tropics it could be a good idea to put the sealer on the deck and there's a good one from a company called Semco and in my book you should use the one that is natural, no coloration. Uh, so you have the true color of the teak deck. Um, that will help the deck survive longer in this harsh environment with the UV light and everything. Um, I have actually bought uh, a gallon of that but I haven't had the time to put it on. So I'll leave that for the next owner of the boat. Um, you don't need it, but if you're staying like in the Caribbean with your boat for a long time, it could be a good idea to put it on. So teak tech aren't as bad as they say, as long as you take care of it the right way. Of course, there's more maintenance than not having one, but I really like it. It's beautiful and uh, yeah, it's nice to walk on. But with that being said, if I would put a new deck on a boat nowadays, I think I would have gone for a, a fake teak deck, like Easy Tech or something like that. Because they have really come a long way to look almost like real teak. Uh, and they're not as hot any longer as they used to be. Not as good as real teak, but it's a lot more nice for the environment, and for the forest not cutting down nice teak trees because that's another thing the teak that you're buying nowadays is often not the same quality as it used to be when it was like Burma teak and stuff like that the grown teak is not as uh, rich on uh, oils and stuff like that in the wood that prevents it from uh, wearing So this is the teak piece I'll use to make the new plugs from um, with the drill bit and as you can see 
there's quite a lot of waste around the actual plug you're making but yeah that's just how it is um, you don't do very many of them and not very often so I guess that's okay uh, I'll make sure to have something underneath this piece if you go through so you don't drill into the deck of the boat or something like that so I'll just use a normal cutting board from the kitchen <laughs> You find a lot of good stuff in the kitchen when you're working on your boat. Now, this is a really nice kit to have on the boat to take care of your teak deck. Uh, two drills, one female and one male. This one will uh, fabricate plugs for you. Just uh, drill into a plank of teak to make your own plugs. And then you use this one to drill in the deck. Uh, you can buy it like a kit or you can buy them separate but that's really nice and handy to have uh, on board yeah the ideal machine for a drill bit like this is a press drill in a machine shop but being on a boat you don't have that and it's definitely possible using just a normal power drill like this battery driven uh, you just have to make sure that it doesn't wander off when you start drilling and also when you get down a bit you have to make sure that you don't angle the machine because then you will break the plug off and then you just break them off like this yeah some of you might wonder why don't I just go to the store and buy a bag of uh, tick plugs that's because the tick you will get on those plugs you just buy in a bag is often not very nice and uh, also I like to be uh, I don't know how do you say that uh, independent <laughs> having the tools on the boat rather than to be forced to go to a store to just buy a heavily overpriced bag of uh, plugs the glue I will use to uh, put this in place. Some people will say that it's the wrong type of glue, but I'll say it's the best glue for this type of work because you never have to do it again. Uh, I'll use epoxy. Um, and I'll use the type from, let me show you, from uh, West System G Flex. So it allows some movement because it's not really hard this epoxy uh, that's why the name G flex it allows for some flexing which you will have in a tick tick uh, with this the plugs will never come off again some people will say yeah but now you will have problems with the UV light and that will uh, make the glue yellow and you will see that but that's not the case when you do the plugs like this when you have the drill male and the female because these plugs are really a snug and tight fit so there won't be any glue around the plug that you will see on top of the deck the glue will just sit on the side and beneath the plug really so that's why I use this type of glue it hardens really quick especially in the environment we have down here this hot weather this is a really easy glue to use and it's pre thickened so you don't have to do any of that. You just take two strings 50-50 like this and then you mix it real good. Yeah, in this hot environment I would say you have maximum 25 to 30 minutes uh, of use with this glue before it starts, starts to gel. Hey, Vera. Yeah, so first I put the glue in and then I put the screw back in place and lastly the plug.
Yeah, and of course you should have the grains on the plug in the same direction as the plank you're putting it in. Är det något som har gått sönder? Ja! Uh, ja! ja. Tunna! Då! Mm. Då! Tunna! Då! Då! Nej! 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 Och då! Tunna! Ja, vad synd! Och då! It's been about three hours now and the epoxy glue is um, not fully cured but uh, uh, cured enough so I can sand uh, the plugs down like I have uh, done here on this one. So that's what I will do now, sand them all down and uh, then this job is done. I started sanding the plugs. But then I decided to go over the whole deck and sand it lightly. We're taking a break from boat work tonight. Steve is gonna pick us up now and we he said the other day that he wanted to treat Vera to these um, big uh, indoor playgrounds so we're heading there it's uh, at a shopping mall and it's, it will be and it will be the first time that Vera go to one of these places oh tack mm, it's gonna be cool It was easy to say Vera loved the place. What a dream place for a child living on a boat. Wow. Thanks for watching. We hope you got some good tips on how to take care of tick ticks. If you want more from us, like all the latest news, you can join our Patreon crew. See you next week.